haven't had the pleasure in actually meeting him because during that time <coughs> I had to go off for my autograph. So could you tell me your experience with Jeffrey <coughs> Vincent Paris? Well, firstly, I'm absolutely ecstatic to talk about this. I love Jeffrey. I think he's amazing. And I actually can't wait for you to be able to have that pleasure. Um, so, Jeffrey, if you see this at any point or if anyone who knows him or goes to the same conventions and has kind of clicked on to the one that we we attend and that we're talking about in these videos, please, please, please vote Jeffrey, 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 because he is amazing. Um, his energy. Oh, goodness. So first things first. I'm going to mention exactly what I said to you the other day, Jason. When he came into a room, everybody lit up. Now, don't get me wrong. When you've got 10 plus famous guests from your favorite TV show and everybody else's favorite TV show that's in that room, which, you know, is hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, everybody lights up. But when I tell you they lit up was like everyone might as well have been standing up dancing doing the mexican wave every time jeffrey came into a room his energy lit everybody up he would say good morning to everyone if you were in the queue closest to him and he's walking past you to his, to his table to his wherever he was going he would look at every single person down the line and he would just make you feel you know like hey i'm saying hello to every single how are you how are you how are you and it just made you feel incredible he loved spending that weekend down with us that much was clear um, and I think my my experience with Jeffrey was special because we did our photo opportunity. Nothing much to say there, if I'm being honest. He was plenty polite. We were psyched. Um, he looked wicked. His picture with us, he's like rock signs. You know, he's being down to earth. He thanked us for coming. We thanked him for coming. We moved on. Autographs was uh, wicked, but that's only because of what happened in the middle. So my experience with Jeffrey really happened when we went to his Q and A, and. For those of you who haven't seen the other two videos, we explained in our first video that uh, Jason and I actually met in a smoking area uh, to one of these events. And I had just met Mark Shepard. You had just met Alexander. Both of us were fangirling. I'm pretty much passing out. And we were standing very close to each other in smokers area and just sort of happened to realize that we'd been lining up with each other in the same room in, in Alexander's line. And, you know, we sort of recognized each other, sort of, you know, the awkward strangers nod and you know, smile. Yeah, smile. And then we sort of put on to each other's conversations. The, the smoking area we went out is the more compact one, isn't it? And 20 minutes later, uh, your friend went for a lie down, didn't she? And you came and, and started uh, Jeffrey's Q&A. And I remember saying to you, or you saying to me, actually, sorry, I was about to say it wrong. You saying to me, you know, I'd love to ask one of them a question. It'd be like a dream, but I just, I'm worried I'll get up there and cock it up. And I remember saying to you, no, no, like, just do it. You know, you've paid a lot of money. You're here to enjoy yourself. If there's a question you want to ask, you ask it because you've got nothing to lose. Um, if you fall flat on your face, you fall flat on your face. Like I did in front of Mark and Alexander, but less about that. Um, yeah, that's less about that. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about go to the video before <laughs> um and i remember you saying to me would you not ask them a question i said yeah actually i have one um you know which would be appropriate for jeffrey but i just don't have because i don't i don't have it in me and i remember you talking me up and then next thing i know next thing i know 20 minutes after meeting this lovely stranger i'm in a queue i'm in a packed room with hundreds of people and for those of you who don't know, the convention we go to, they set up the chairs in blocks. So you've got block one, block two, block three, block four, like four on a dice, which means that there's um, walkways that go in a plus sign through the middle of the two uh, sets of blocks and straight through the middle, right? And so <laughs> I've walked out, I've walked down, I've walked through the middle and I've walked down the aisle, right? Like a zigzag. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't feel my legs... <laughs> I could feel my legs and I thought, oh, my God, I've got to turn around. I thought, I can't turn around because there's only like three people in this queue. And <gasps> Next thing I know, I'm standing up and asking this question. Well, it was a brilliant question, apparently. I didn't think so, but he certainly enjoyed it. Um, the question was something along the lines of, you know, we're all here. We're having major fangirl moments in front of all of you. Is there any kind of moment in your life where you've managed to meet somebody you considered extremely famous in comparison to yourself or somebody that you was kind of like a role model to you or somebody you looked up to that you've then had, you know, cock, cock up moments. It, I just yeah. cock. <laughs> it was a great question. It was a great question. Oh, no. Um, 
like that he, you know, balls up in front of. And he told this wicked story um, about meeting with the director, going to his house and not realising that the director was the director that he's grown up loving all this time. So he's talking about him as if he wasn't sat in front of him. That was a great story. I got a lot of laughs. I got a big round of applause at the end of it. But the biggest bit was the next day I lined up for the autograph because, you know, for those who don't know, my partner and I have got a big uh, Winchester Brothers Supernatural T-shirt. And uh, since day one, decided that when his mum bought it for him for his birthday, we weren't going to wear it. He was going to we were going to collect the signatures on it. And so it's in a massive like football T-shirt uh, frame with all the signatures on it. So we went and got a signature. And I just couldn't help myself, Jason. I really couldn't. I just said to him, I said, oh, you were wicked yesterday. Thanks so much during the weekend, blah, blah, blah. And thank you for being so gracious, answering my question. He said, oh, yes, I remember you standing up and asking me a question. Sorry, remind me which question it was again. I said, oh, it was about the fangirl moments. And he thanked me. And that moment was so surreal. He couldn't say thank you. He was like, oh, my God, actually... He went, that was a fantastic question. He was like, never in my wildest dreams have I ever had the opportunity or thought I was going to have the opportunity to tell that story. And it's a brilliant story. And I thank you so much. And I was like, I felt like my throat had gone dry all over again. I felt like I couldn't, you know, feel my legs again as if I just asked the question. Because I remember coming back physically like shaking and thinking, oh my God, I just did that. And he was just so, so brilliant. Um, So yeah, Jeffrey, come back. I miss you. Do you know what? I, I love that because that you had your moment and then yeah. you gave him his moment. A yeah. story that he obviously was so passionate to tell and you give him that door. You open the door for him. You give him your question and there he Which was really nice. That, that was really nice. Um, and it just, I think it just kind of brought Jeffrey down from this level. If anyone hasn't seen the show... Jeffrey plays a character called Asmodeus, who is uh, basically like one of the ultimate demons. Um, you have to watch it to understand who he is. I'm not going to start going into technical details and titles, but he basically plays a high up demon and he's like super powerful. And the King of Hell, Crowley, he's he's off scene at that time. And it's kind of otherworldly, I want to say. By that point in the show, you sort of start to forget that, <laughs> you know, there's normal things in the world. And um, we used to you know, a lot of death, destruction and supernatural beings and powers. And uh, meeting him and him saying that just kind of was a really surreal moment where I had a moment of sort of clarity, realising, you know, he's just a person as well. And he's really pleased to be here this weekend. Like, he obviously really wanted to tell that story. And I'm really glad that he had the opportunity to. So I keep saying this in every video. If you see this, Jeffrey, come back. We love you. We miss you. It was fantastic to meet you. Please, please consider coming back again. Um, and for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to meet the one and only Asmodeus, a.k.a. Jeffrey Vincent Paris, do it. You know, don't question it. He, you know, get involved. He He's like the main main man. Go find him. He's cool as hell. Um, but yeah, that's Jeffrey Vincent Paris. Thanks for coming over and watching part two if you're interested. And uh, we'll see you soon.